time now for Coming In Hot with Brent Wallace and former Ottawa Senators Jason York. Hey everybody, uh, happy Thursday. And uh, Yorkie uh, has promised to buy everybody a free round at the uh, Cheshire Cat. For <laughs> can, you, can you hear me okay? Yeah, you're okay. Yeah, brutal. Great start to the morning. <laughs> well, this, is all, this is on you. I, so I'm in Chicago. I brought the microphone. It was all set up. Uh, it won't plug in properly to my laptop. So, yeah. Uh, I, I got nothing for you. I'm, I am not uh, tech savvy. All I know is I woke up this morning. Uh, actually, early while I got ready for the show at quarter to nine, was working with my audio and like, what is going on? It's like an alien's been in my office and taken over my audio. Anyhow, what are you going to do? All right. All right. We'll move on. Um, nice to see you as always. The show uh, is kicking off into the off season as the Sens are now done the regular season, Yorkie. But, and we should have known, you You said you're going to take Boston. I said Anton Forsberg was 3-0-1 in his lifetime against the Boston Bruins. And I've taken the Sens enough times this year to be below 500, and I didn't do it, and they won. And he was fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Well, like, why not go out on the high, Wally? No, nope, that's it. I'm taking Boston. Idiot. That, that put a great exclamation mark on the on the Ottawa Senators' season and your season. As the, uh, you know what? If there's anything you should learn here with a lesson, Wally, it's you should not bet. <laughs> save, save your hey. save, save your hard earned money, but uh, no, it's just this is the thing with Ottawa this year. You think one thing is going to happen, they do the other. Um, and but but one thing I will say this: nice ending to the season on, on a year where there was so much hope, so much. Uh, many people picked Ottawa to, to to make the playoffs this year. So um, I I would say I will say this: I, I'm happy. I'm really happy for Jacques Martin. He came in and to leave. Uh, I don't see him back coaching in the NHL as a head coach. To leave on that high note, you saw the big smile on his face after the game. For me personally, having played for Jacques for five years, knowing the man, that, that was really nice to see. Good good ending for Jacques Martin. Yeah, he finishes, I think it's 500, right, for his, his record. Um, yeah. People, there was a lot of doubt saying, oh, he was going to uh, – be a disaster behind the bench. This team will never get it straightened out. I, I thought he corrected what he could. Uh, he's not a miracle worker. And by the time he took over, the season was over for the most part. Um, and, at, and realistically, I thought there was a lot of habits that were corrected or at least have started to be corrected. And the big part is he's always brought it up in Yorkie. You've alluded to it time and time again. It's about the habits and making these guys become professionals. Well, you hit, you hit the word, the, the key word right there, professional. I think Jacques used that word so many times from day one right to uh, right till that last game. That's what he does. He just teaches he teaches you to be an NHL player and to create habits. And and the habits for this team when when Jacques came in weren't very good. And and that was the biggest thing he needed to address. And uh, I, I go back and forth to this uh, the habits with the puck, making decisions, playing the right way. Uh, you heard him talking about preparing this team to learn how to play when it's important. So that's tough when your games are don't have a lot of meaning. But there were some things that, that I thought really improved with this team, especially the play of certain players. I said this the other day on the show. Jake Sanderson got better, <laughs> which which is pretty tough to do from the level he was at. And the guy that took a ton of heat – um, for his inconsistent play, uh, and to, to looking at him now is Drake Batherson. I just, I am so impressed with how this player played down the stretch, how he improved his overall game, and just um, he didn't lose because it's one thing when you get a coach Wally that comes in and he's a defense first guy and he tries to teach better habits, better puck management. You would think a player like a Batherson, his production would drop. Because he's trying to buy in, he's trying to play the right way. His production went up, and his defensive play got better. So that's just an example of one of the things I, I thought Jacques when he came in uh, on, on certain players, um, and, and that player in particular, Drake Batherson. I, I think his game went to another level. I completely agree with you. Another guy 
uh, I would say did. And I understand he's still a pretty highly talented player, but he's going to be in our today's Did You Know, um, which is brought to you as always by Wendy's. Uh, download the Daily Faceoff Survivor Pool at uh, dailyfaceoff.com and get involved um, with Daily Picking and uh, see if you can be rewarded with weekly prizes, uh, including the now uh, small coffee at, uh, at uh, Wendy's for about five bucks. That's uh, Wendy's and Daily Faceoff Survivor Pool. Wendy's. Uh, I'm loving him. No, that's not that's wrong. Uh, Brady Kachuk, by the way, yeah, he finished uh, leading the team in scoring for the fourth time. As a part of the fact, there's only been uh, three other people to lead the Ottawa Senators in scoring uh, for more four times or more in their career. Lexi Yashin did it six times, Eric Carlson and Daniel Lalfordson five each. Carlson, by the way, six of them all consecutively. Um, so Brady at 24. Uh, is going to slide up that chart, I would suspect, and maybe the all-time, possibly, for the Ottawa Senators. He's got to tussle with Tim Stutzel every year now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's. Uh, but the one thing, you know, Brady does. He gets his goals, and um, what was his final tally this year? I don't have the stats. Thirty-seven. Thirty-seven goals. So three, three, three out of forty. It's pretty good there in year offensively. Um, but like us, we've talked about this all year long. We've talked about it for the last three or four years with Kachuk. Um, it's just, it's that rambunctious style he plays. And, and for people, yeah. I hate saying this, everybody keeps saying it, wait till he gets in the playoffs to, to, to really see. And that's the frustrating part. Um, his game is going to be better in the playoffs, and everybody's just waiting. I don't want to uh, pull coals at everybody here, but it, I, I think we're even going to see a better form of Brady Kachuk when that happens, hopefully next year. Um, I, I, you know, well, I'm sure we'll get into this over the weeks and months, but this off season, Wally, is, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be vital um, to uh, determining whether or not this team's going to be a playoff team next year. Got it. We're going to have this debate all season long on whether or not this is a playoff <laughs> team or not. But Well, listen, there's, there's a couple important dates coming up. You, you've got uh, the biggest one is, is the draft. And I, and I think that's, most likely where you're going to see some change happening with this group. And Snails talked about it um, months ago. I, I know he was not a lot of said, was said the other day, but I, I, I would think, I would think there's highly, highly very good chance that uh, some, some pretty important moves get made in the draft. Uh, and it is locker cleanup today for the Ottawa Senators as the players and Jacques will speak uh, one final time for him as acting interim head coach. And then tomorrow we will hear from Steve Steos and what he has to say. But again, Steve doesn't say very much that we don't already kind of know in the public, right? There's going to be change. We need to fix stuff. We need to build an identity. There has to be some, like this team, Yorkie has zero identity. Like they're just a hockey team on the ice right now. They're like the, and I'll say this Buffalo, Columbus, there's just no identity with this group whatsoever. Well, if you look, if you look at every team that, that, that missed the playoffs this year, I, I, you, you could blanket them all with the same observation and say, yeah, they don't have an identity because they don't have a winning identity. Yeah, for Otto has lumped in that as well. Um, I just, if, if you look at the shopping list of, of what needs to be done, right shot D, a forward or two that's older, experienced, plays 200 foot game. Uh, just becoming a harder team, faster team, and the question with the goaltending. And, of course, <laughs> we haven't even talked about this. Of course, Forsberg against Boston plays his best game of the year. Like how, he was outstanding. Uh, he was outstanding. <laughs> and everyone's <laughs> like, where was this this year? So, it's, that's, it's again, it's, 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 like, uh, it's like torturing people at the end of the season. But what are you going to do? It's, you, you play the games you have. It is what it is. Um, I, I've said this for the last little while. It's so it's 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 so tough to evaluate right now when when you're playing with these types of games. But um, yeah, I to your point with Dale so Wally, I think it's good. Like, <laughs> don't show your hand. Don't don't be so forthright. Don't say the wrong thing. You're better to say nothing. Than to, to to say a bunch of gibberish and, and and put and put yourself back yourself in their corner like we've seen That's time right. and time again here over the years. So I've got I, I got no problem with an organization keeping things tight to the best and and just you know be, being deliberate and just sticking to what the, the message is. And, and right now it's 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 wait and see. There's a process and um, 
you know, like I said, I think the NHL draft is going to be very telling for what management does. Uh, just a quick note on Forsberg before we get to our uh, hot and cold performer, because I, I debated putting Forsberg as the hot and cold performer based on well, his game. He's pretty against awesome. Boston. He was very good. So, and then I was like, well, if we had a show the next day, I would use it. But it, I, I'll tell you in a sec who our hot and cold performer is. But down the stretch, Anton Forsberg in 14 games, uh, 14 starts, eight and four with a 306 and an 892. Like, not terrible. Good yeah. to me, good backup numbers. Yeah, comparatively like, to what it was, for sure. Yeah, like, I, ideally you'd like it over nine hundred. But the wet, the record's better. Well, what was that stat you're talking about the other day on the show? How, how many times the Senators actually led games going down the stretch? There's a, a huge amount of comebacks. Um, so I don't. I, well, they kept I giving up have, the, the first goal every two shots. Yeah, I, I have no. This is just my personal feeling on this. And I think a lot of people share the same sentiment. I, I think something might get done with the goaltending situation. One of the goaltenders, but I, I would, I would think there's a good possibility that change if you can do it, because that's the thing, if, because that's one of the toughest things to do. You got guys under contract, but um, there's a lot of money coming off the books. So there's, there's money coming off the books. So there'd be a little bit of money to work with, but it's going to be an interesting off season to say the least. All right. So let's do uh, today's hot and cold performer. Uh, brought to you by DoorDash. Get it delivered even here in Chicago if you need to. Uh, with Double Dash on DoorDash, you can order from multiple restaurants in the same delivery without additional delivery fees so everyone can get what they want or need. Uh, our listeners get 25% off and zero delivery fees on their first order, $15 or more when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store. Enter code NATION25. That's 25% off up to a $10 value. Zero delivery fees in your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store. Nation 25, offer valid in Canada, subject to change, terms apply. Yorkie, here's the reason why. Yuri Schmeckel, in his 20th NHL game, got his first NHL goal, uh, which, by the way, if you saw it, was a disaster because they didn't call it a goal and they had to review it. And that's, I hate that as your first goal. He played a career high, if you will, 1459. He led the team in block shots. Uh, he had one shot on goal, one goal. That's pretty good shooting percentage, and he was a plus one. He had a really good game, and I just feel – we just owed him a little fist bump, if you will. Yuri Schmeckel, the hot and cold performer. Uh, are you in the everybody gets a freezy world, Wally? Are you that? Are you that uh, apple slice. I am sorry. Uh, orange slices. Everybody gets orange slices. Are you that parent? Yes. Let's no, let's, but let's get let's 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 forget about. Uh, you know what? Let's just not even you know what? forget about grades. Everybody passes. Oh yeah, we, that's already got passing. When <laughs> Anton Forsberg had enough opportunities this year to be the hot or cold performer many times as the hot performer. Okay. How do, how do give you give not... Yuri one time? Listen, well, the guy Forsberg just played the best game of the year and not giving him hot performance. No, he's, he had a shutout the other night. Tough crowd, man. So yeah. back. Uh, where is it here? Uh, against against Chicago, he had a he had a two nothing shutout. Yeah, doesn't that matter? No, I'm saying Forsberg should get the hot performer. I'm telling you, I could have done it, but you get but you're but you're the fairness police, so you're giving it to Yuri Schmeckel because he got his first goal. And his so you don't think he he played fourteen fifty nine? Yeah, but he he didn't single handedly win the Ottawa Senators the game. Oh. Was, was, it, it didn't matter if they won the game or not, Yorkie. At anyway. this point, they knew they weren't going to play any more games. It didn't matter. I don't know. Listen, that was a superhuman effort by Anton Forsberg. Did, so judging by the standings, too, did Forsberg's effort, if they lose that game in regular season, does Mon Montreal leapfrog some, don't they? Or they end up uh, or, No, no. Arizona. I, I'm trying Montreal's to done. Of, no, but if, if Ottawa loses that game in regulation. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. they could have. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Arizona. So. Yes. <laughs> not, a, not only does Forsberg have his best game of the season when it doesn't matter, he just makes sure that Ottawa moves down a couple places in the draft, too. <laughs> See? So so why would I want to reward that kind of behavior? That's not, that's not what we want here. That's not what we want at all. Oh, boy. Yeah, yeah. So you're not happy with Yuri Schmeckel. Okay, fine. Wow, listen, I'm, am I happy for him? Sure, he got his first NHL goal. It's nice. He had a big smile on his face. Um, I'll never say I feel bad for a player because 
you know, I did. I'm sure his year, well, I'm certain his year didn't go the way he thought it would go when he came over. Um, ended up in Belleville for most of the years. So anyways, we'll give him a freezy and and give him and give him the hot performer of the game. He, he got <laughs> orange slices. Right. He get, you remember um, the orange slices? Yeah. Are everybody you, uh, gets orange slices. There's no way. Listen, there's no way you were the guy slicing up oranges for soccer. Like you, there's no. That was your wife. No. She would make uh, brownies and cupcakes and cookies and oh yeah. Cake oh, for you, you guys were bringing that to the soccer field. So we didn't do a lot of soccer. Our kids didn't like it. What do you do? Hockey. Do My do? daughter played basketball. Oh, so but basketball for kids coincides with the hockey season, right? It's kind of the same. Like... Uh, not real, like so so. Um, yeah. So here's the thing, and I get so. As we both know, I, I know Chris Schwartz really well. And like, there is a huge argument, and I've heard it lots. Way Gretzky, everybody needs to play two sports. Yeah. You, got, you can't play hockey in the summer. Yeah. I understand that completely. Mm -hmm. My kid doesn't want to play a different sport. So <laughs> telling them they've got to go do something <laughs> because you have to. Now, he did, he did play like football and he did play some basketball, but his That's love true. has always been get me on the ice. I want yeah. to play hockey. Yeah. So who's, he plays who's, he plays hockey. Who's the parent? Who's the parent? <laughs> he is. <laughs> yeah. He's calling the shots for the wall of Santa Claus. Listen, like if that's what you love to do, I, I'm not gonna say no, you have to play basketball and be miserable because we said you need to play two sports. Hey, when I when I was a kid, I, I loved eating cookies. I didn't, I didn't get the This isn't the same. <laughs> Like, this isn't the same. I love eating cookies. Well, why can't I eat cookies all the time? So, okay. So let's force them to do something they don't really want to do. And still, because he's still being active. He's still working out. He's still playing basketball in the driveway. Like, do I, do we need to force him to do something different? Because somebody said yes. It doesn't matter. It's not, it's not like, it's by not the way. Like for, it's not like you're forcing him to do something terrible. Go outside and play a sport. Like, God forbid. If you hate the sport, you don't want to play it. Like, I don't understand how you don't see this. Oh, God. Ah, I listen, I'm of the mind as long as you're doing something active and you're having a good time and you're like, what, what's the big deal? I was um, I was a big baseball guy, but that's – I just did it. Well, is he – is your son – your son's your oldest, right? No, youngest. He's the youngest, eh? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's, there's so many different debates about – being a one sport athlete, two sport athlete, and you need to be well rounded. I'll tell you one thing that a lot of the guys nowadays they are hockey all the time. It's it's crazy. Like, I a, a lot of the kids that I'm seeing that make it, it's just it's I'm not gonna say it's unfortunate because be, because these kids that do it obviously love what they're doing and have here's the thing people that ended up being really really good at something like pro sports or whatever, pianists, professional musicians. They have uh, OCD. It's like they can't stop doing things. Mm -hmm. They can't stop practicing. And that's, that's, that's what makes you really good at something, just your ability to practice and practice and practice over and over again. So um, here's a tip for parents. Unless your kid has that, they're not going anywhere. <laughs> it's just... <laughs> but, okay, but wait, that's another argument. That's I don't want to get into this today, but that's another argument. They don't have to go to the NHL or they have, no. have to go to the... They can go play college scholarships or they can play... Maybe oh, yeah. lower tiers in Europe or whatever. Oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, we, yeah, yeah. That's every, my art. I, I hear every I used to hear every day at uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. AAA yeah. hockey or whatever it is. He's not playing in the show. I don't know why you're bothering. Because he just that. wants to play a game. I love that yeah. one though. Oh yeah, yeah. He'll just he'll just get a college scholarship because those are easy to get. <laughs> yeah. But I remember being <laughs> so Yorkie, I remember being in House League. Yeah. Uh, so Ryan played house league. It had been like 10 years, maybe eight. I can't remember. It was really young. And one of the parents is like, how do you know he's not going to the NHL? I'm like, I don't know. So you go and do whatever it is you want to do to get them to wherever they want to go. But let's not talk about the NHL at eight years old, shall we? Yeah. Anyway, you know, uh, just uh, Yorkie, I, hold on. We're moving on. But I've been sitting here looking at you all show. And I knew I could. You look like somebody I knew. And this is who it is. You look yeah. like Ernest. Ernest goes to camp? <laughs> <laughs> well, my face must be huge because I'm like so close to the camera. Um, 
but hey, that's this. That's this is who you is. I'm calling you Ernest from now on. You got a picture? You gonna, are you gonna, do we have the, do we have the picture of said Ernest? Are you talking about Ernest of those terrible movies? Yeah. Ernest? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> can can you not see it? I can't see it. I can only see me in the camera. Oh my god. Um, but disaster. that's um that that whole thing with we could do a whole show on that with sports and and, and kids playing sports. So it's it's yes. it's a fast it's a fascinating uh thing to talk about because it's so uh people have so many different opinions on it i'll tell you this i tweeted this out about three weeks ago for people that are interested in 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 development of 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 being high-end athletes or musicians or whatever it may be i read this book it's called the talent code it, it gives you a really good understanding of um of how you de- of how skills and and uh People develop their abilities to the to the highest degree. Um, it re- really interesting. Well, you'd actually enjoy it. It's called the Talent Code. Excellent book. Also, another good book is Bob McKenzie's uh, Crazy Hockey Dad. I think it's called or mm. it's Hockey Dad. But Bob was not saying when he was a hockey dad. Yeah. I, I, I read that. There's some great stories in there. Yeah, uh, we should maybe get him on and talk about that book in the summer. Okay. Yeah. Since he's just sitting at the cottage doing nothing. Uh, okay. Let's. No, he's he's, getting, he's he's doesn't doesn't he have his own brand of margaritas? The uh, Bobby yeah. margaritas. He's Bobby, Mar- margaritas. Bobby margaritas. I got oh. a couple sent to me. Yeah, they're pretty good. Oh, so good, so good. Uh, all right, this show proudly presented by BEI, Bonisher Excavating Inc., helping to shape the Ottawa Valley as always. Equipment rentals, aggregate topsoil sales, uh, custom crushing and screening, haulage and floating, hot mix paving and concrete formwork. Basically, look, they are do a commercial and residential. If you need some work done, driveway, aggregate deliveries, all that stuff, give them a call. 613-432-1120 or go to bonishereexcavating.com. Uh, tomorrow, by the way, is uh, Free Hockey Friday. Oh, Yorkie can't see this. I Can you do Douglas? See. I can't see anything. Okay. Let me take over the show again, as usual. Sure. Uh, get a great night's sleep. Brought to you by Douglas. Uh, and Maine Canada's best mattress on Canadian living, unrivaled comfort and feel, motion isolation, sleep school, release pressure points, and of course, a great value. Loved by more than 200,000 Canadians. Uh, get delivery usually in one to four business days. It's free shipping right from uh, coast to coast. Every mattress comes with a free comfort sleep bundle, pillows, sheets, and mattress protector. Order your Douglas today. Don't wait. It's a 365-night sleep trial by visiting douglas.ca slash C-I-H. Canada's best mattress made for Canadians. And Yorkie, as we both woke up today, I actually brought my AG1 with me to give me a lot more energy through the day. A foundational nutritional supplement that basically supports your body's universal needs like gut optimization, stress management, and immune support. Uh, Gone are the days of numerous multivitamin pills, thank goodness. Basically, one scoop of AG1 into your nice little shaker cup and away you go. Uh, Tested over 950 contaminants, NSF certified for sport. Uh, if you want to take ownership of your health, welcome in then AG1 to your life and do our show. It starts with AG1. Try it. Get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3, K2, and five free AG1 travel packs, which I brought with me, with your first purchase of drinkag1.com slash CIH. Man, no help from you today whatsoever. No, you got nothing. So people want us to now do the show as Neil Page and Ernest. <laughs> it's because of my nose my nose i, I can't do it on uh on uh on the show of gross people oh, my oh, nose yeah. basically i've got no cartilage in there it's like a rubber nose it's, it's been broken so many times um would yeah. you have a number it started in junior uh the first really bad one i, I don't even have a registered uh time of when it actually did break I just think I just kept playing with it. Um, I, I would say at least three or four times. Like it's 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 pretty gross. Like I can I can move my nose all over the place, but uh, it's good. It's good for taking a punch. Like it rolls. My nose rolls with the ball, so it's came in handy. There's actually a pretty funny picture on that on the on the uh, internet. Um, we had a five on five once with New Jersey. And I think I told this story before. I, I got uh, Andre Waugh basically ran over Scott Niedermeyer. And New Jersey at the time had a really tough team. So I happened to be on the ice. Wrong place, wrong time. Because New Jersey had 
Lyle Odeline, Randy McKay, Ken Danico, Scott Stevens, all four of those guys were on the ice. Um, I'm missing somebody else. Um, yes, I'm trying to think who it is. Somebody very tough as well. But anyhow, would it be 2002, 2003? There? No, that was, uh, this is going back to the late night. Okay. They also have guys like Alain Nasruddin. So they just, right? Like the head guys could I, also I, throw. Anyway. Oh, it's crazy. It's crazy. So anyhow, uh, two guys jump Andre. Um, I think old line and sorry, the guy I'm forgetting. How could I forget this guy? Christoph Oliwa. Uh, okay. That's what so I was just Ol coming up with. Yeah. Oliwa and old line are surrounded Andre. Danico's looking to grab somebody. I'm the closest guy. Uh, he ends up dropping his gloves. So I have no choice to kind of drop my gloves. And then I'm, I didn't realize he was a left-handed puncher, so right away I grab his I, gr I grab his uh, his other hand because I think he's a righty, and I take a left right in the nose. So there's a picture there's a picture online if you Google uh, Darko York uh, fight his his fist. You can see my nose moving as his fist is hitting it, and it's like a spill shot. So I'm pretty sure Wally uh, that date against New Jersey, I broke my nose as well. <laughs> now, I don't want to get on this topic for very long because I got we got to move on. But were there times like you would just basically break your nose and then just go back to the bench like nothing happened? At some point, it just became just another day at the office. Yeah, yeah, oh. pretty well. Well, see, it was it was like I I would say you you I knew one time I got hit from I got hit in uh, Tampa. It was. Uh, what was this guy's Andre Nezardine? And uh, I got hit. He basically cross checked me in the face uh, behind the net, and uh, both my eyes turned black um, <laughs> and stitches and everything. So I, I left that game. Um, I left that game because I, I, I got a concussion from the play. So there's there's a picture of me in the paper the, the next couple of days, and my yeah, my I look like a raccoon. Both eyes completely black. So I. I I didn't even get my nose x-rayed, but I'm sure it was, I'm sure that was broken as well. Add it to the list of things that were wrong with me after taking a cross check to the face. So um, I did just send Gavin the picture uh, of you with Ken Danico, but you said oh. you can't see it. And I want you to. Uh, I know what it looks like. All right. But I'll see when Gavin gets it in you here. Um, it? I did find it. <laughs> Uh, I can do a lot during uh, these this show. Like, how about, like, so that's the thing. Like in the nineties, if the refs didn't come in and save guys, so if if stuff happened, they let the players deal with it. So if you, yeah. I remember, I remember one game. New Jersey had a very tough team. I said something to Odeline, and Odeline tried to get me the entire rest of that game after every whistle. <laughs> so finally. Uh, he, that's another um, thing against New Jersey that happened. I think there's a video of that. I ended up having to, it wasn't much of a fight because old line, I think, was about 225 pounds. I was 190. Um, anyways, you had to, if, if, if you, what do they say? What's that new saying they have over the internet? If you uh, fuck around and find out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that term, that term w ran very true. Uh, through my era in the nineties, like if you, you had that, you had, you had to account for your actions, which I, I think is a very good thing in hockey. Uh, here is the photo for people wondering. Uh, yeah. What, what a shot. Eh? Number three against number 33. And you just ate that punch. But how, now, how about, isn't my, but how about that nose? Do you see how it's rolling with the ball? <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Like it's, you know, I didn't miss a shift. Came back after taking one right in the beak, and uh, I know that's 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 that's, that's, that's the okay. that's, now, that's the now he he later joined the broadcast world. Did you two ever cross paths in the broadcast in the booth press box and go, "Hey, remember that time you crushed my face?" Many times. Uh, he's a great guy. <laughs> Ken, Ken, he is Ken, very good. Kenny's a great guy. Good, really good broadcaster. That's the beauty of hockey. Like when stuff like that happens, it's like it happens on the ice. Like we talk about this all the time, especially with guys that fight all the time. Those guys are usually really good buddies for the most yep. part. It's, it's just yep. that's things that happen on the ice happen, and then after the game's over, you, you go have a beer. Like who cares? Yeah. Um, all right. So 
I just want to get in before we go. Uh, the Eastern Conference playoffs are set, but the West, damn West. It, there's six games tonight, Yorkie. All six of them. I know are Western Conference games. It's so bizarre to me. No, um, so we. we it's it's we, you know, it's put Wally. It's putting. I wanted to have my my annual playoff pool tonight, but I got to wait until tomorrow. Yeah, it screws up everything. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna pick our uh, four round one series winners from the East. Uh, I will ask you on the weekend about or after t- tonight who you're picking in the West, and we can discuss it next week. But just so that we have a record of it. Yeah. Um, but all right, let's start with the New York Rangers uh, against Washington. Uh, sorry, yeah, the New York Rangers play Washington. Yeah, uh, I will tell you that it's a two-two series this year. Um, they both split games they both won on home ice Mm -hmm. and washington's they're rolling a little bit right well so are the rangers but yeah all right you don't like you don't like the rangers so i'm curious if you're going to take washington no i I, after what i saw i don't watch the rangers a lot I, i i don't love their top players as far as the style they play Sure. Like I think I do think they're good enough to get through Washington, and unless you know, NHL playoffs is about it's a game of goalie, and Shesterkin, Shesterkin is the better goalie of the two in this series, and he's yeah. they he allows them to play a little more loose, run and gun. So I, I I can't see the Rangers losing in the round in, in the first round with Shesterkin. They got a great power play. The other thing too about the playoffs, well, you know this as well as I do. It seems in the first round there's a, there's a ton of penalties because they're trying to they, they always think they're going to set this standard but as the games get more and more important they call less and less but the first round notoriously uh, has a ton of penalties and the power plays play a huge fact um, I, I think New York because of the goaltending because of the special teams uh, not as much clutch and grab in the first round I I, I don't see how New York loses against Washington I, uh, I, they win. Okay, let's uh, move on to Florida, Tampa. I do, I mean. That's a tough one. I like one. the C- uh, Is it really, though? Is it? I mean, the Florida Panthers, let's, that would be, they're my pick to come out of the East. So yeah. this isn't really much of an issue for me at all. Um, Florida was 2-1 and one against uh, the Panthers this, uh, against the Tampa Bay Lightning this year. I have, Tampa just sat there all year, kind of hanging around a playoff spot. They just got in. They don't seem to be – that's not much of a, a challenge for me. I think Florida gets this easily. Yeah, I. one would think, but the, the big game experience of guys like – everybody talks about Kucherov, and he's a very good player. He's oh been great in the playoffs, but I'm a big Braden Point fan. I just yep. think this guy is, is, is such a complete hockey player. Um, you got Anthony Sorrell, you got Nick Paul, you got Stamp. They got a, they're a tough team to discount, Wally. I, I almost got this one as a pick It's going to come down to goaltending. You, you got so, with Vastileski and Bobrovsky. Again, there's two really good goalies. Um, if, I, if I had to pick one in a playoff series, though, as, as well as Bobrovsky's played, I, 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 I think I'm still taking Vastileski. I have a feeling Tampa could upset them. I, I, I do. So uh, down the stretch, uh, Florida in the last six games is 5-0-1, 22 goals for, seven goals against. I think they're playing the, really well going into the playoffs, which is what you want. Yeah, I, I, don't have the, I don't have the power play stats in front of me right now. So I, uh, to look What do you want to know? I want to know what, uh, what Tampa's power play is clicking at right now compared to Florida. Because as I mentioned – Power plays are huge in the first round. Okay, well, help. Tampa owns the best power play in the league. Florida <laughs> is eighth. Yeah, so uh, both pretty good. And PK wise, uh, you're looking at uh, Tampa's fifth. Florida is sixth. So both special teams are very good. Man, you know, I I would. It's tough. I I love I love how Florida plays. I, I'm on record for. I love Sam Barrett. I think this guy is – you take the, the, the mold he's built with, and that's your prototypical playoff player. Matthew Kachuk as well. Cousins is a rat, tough to play against, good in the playoffs, good, good defense, big defense. Yes. All right, make it quick. 
You know what? I'll I'll go a different thing. I'll take Tampa just because I I think their power play could win them the series. Okay, well, fair enough. Uh, let's do Carolina and the New York Islanders, the series that no one's really going to pay attention to. Um, <laughs> Carolina two one and one in four games against the New York Islanders. They scored four goals in every game. Yeah, yeah. How, how good is New York playing right now? They're heading into the playoffs. Veteran mm-hmm. lineup, deep, long defense, good goaltending. I still like Carolina. Carolina's my pick to go to the final. That's fr- I'll stick with it. I, I, I'll take Carolina, but I think this series is going to be a lot closer than people think. So the Islanders, it's crazy, uh, are 9-1-1 one, and one in their last 11 games. Yeah, they're on a heater. Yeah, can they keep it up is, the guess, the question. Yeah. The thing about Carolina, Wally, and I've watched a bunch of their games, they play with so much, I'll use the word, I don't like using it, but I'll use anything else, structure. Mm-hmm. Um, they don't give you a lot. Their, their puck management might be the best in the league as far as the top teams go. So they're going to make New York work, and New York plays the same way. Um, interesting with the goaltender zone, um, you'd probably give the Islanders the edge in goaltending. I know. I do. Do, 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 you, do you trust? Like, is Freddie Anderson going to be starting for Carolina? Do you, you trust him? So here's uh, – no, I don't. And I've always said that about Freddie Anderson. Uh, here's a question I have for you. It, and maybe it doesn't it, – is the power play or penalty kill more important in the playoffs? 100%. No, sorry, 100%. which one, though? Like, if you, if you have the oh. best PK or the best power play, which one do you – if you can only pick one, which one do you want? I'd probably pick power play um, because as the playoffs go, as they move forward, you're going to get less and less. So you're going to have less opportunities to score on the power play. And if you can get that power play goal, it could mean the winning, the difference between winning, uh, winning and losing. Um, so I'll go with power play. Because right, I see the Islanders right now down that stretch, the 9-11, those 9-1-1 one one games uh, around like 60 60- uh, it's, I thought their power play was doing, or penalty kill was doing well. Uh, by the way, just Carolina with the best penalty kill, second best power play in the league. Wow. So I can see why you like them. Yeah, and they're deep. Right. Like, I, I really like Carolina's D wall. They, they've got, I think they've got the deepest group back there from one through six. Like they've, uh, that team doesn't have a lot of holes. Um, no, it's a very good team. It's just not sexy. It's not sexy because. <laughs> and that's what wins. It's, it's the way they play. It's, they're, they just grind. They have they have talent, but their talented guys play with a grinder mentality, which is very tough. Yes. To play. The last twenty one games, they're sixteen four and one. Yeah, yeah. And I and I love I love Rod Debod as a coach. He's you know listening to listening when they bring the cameras in to when Rod talks to the group. It's I'm older now, and I'm like, man, I'd love to play for that guy. I just. I love I love how he conducts himself. I, I love how he handles his team. You can tell his players will go through a wall for him too. Here's hoping he gets out in round one and gets fired and comes to Ottawa. That's that's oh. all. <laughs> that well, I, that would be my guy if that ever came available. Oh. Wolf, hundred percent. So, so in those last twenty one games, Yorkie, their penalty kill four for sixty three at ninety seven percent. Or sorry, ninety three percent. Yeah. And, 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 and like, penalty kill is just it's it's work 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 and sacrifice. So obviously those guys are willing to do those things for their coach. Okay, let's move on now to the Toronto Maple Leafs against the Boston Bruin. <laughs> now let me set it up here. Toronto lost all four games against the Boston Bruin this year. How come? Uh, what are you going with the Bruins? Uh, the French? Are these the French Bruins? I just. I just wanted I highlight. I wanted to em, em, emphasize, emphasize the Boston Bruin. I, I don't know. I, who do you think? You a go, little fun every once in a while. You go first on this one. I, I, I'm a little torn on this one. So I think the Bruins have been terrible down the stretch. Me too. That's what I don't like about their game right now. I don't think they've been playing very good for a little bit here. And that concerns me. So Boston's lost three of four. Um, I don't feel like they've gotten on a 
a roll really down the stretch. They, and I don't keep, they didn't lose a lot. Like they haven't lost three in a row in regulation since November. So, but if this is a time, it's the Toronto time. I don't want Toronto to win, so it's I'm having a tough time just to say Toronto to win this series. But I think Toronto can win this series. <laughs> hey, have you been down in there? You've been have you been drinking the Kool Aid lately? The uh, the Leaf Kool Aid. Uh, no, but at some point they have to win. Some, well, I guess not. It's been since '67, but you just feel like with the talent they have amassed in that group, that yeah. somehow. They can win a round or two. Did you? And watch, I do know they won a round last year or whatever it was. But did you watch the highlight the other night from when uh, Willie Nylander went in on the four, on the on the on the four check inside the blue line and basically stopped skating and went to the bench and they got scored on? Like yes. it, it, yes. it went viral. <laughs> I know there was a high stick and there's circumstances it looked a lot worse, but man. This, this is going to be dependent on the guys Toronto brought in and if they come in and do what they were advertised to do. Yes. Like, yes. like, like Bertuzzi, uh, Domi. Domi. Um, you, you look on their, on their back end, the moves, the moves they did bring Jake McCabe in last year. Does he come in and, and, and make a difference? Um I'm, for, I'm, I'm, I'm forgetting the guy, the big defenseman they brought in from Washington. It's not Edmondson. Ed, no. yeah, yeah, him too. Is like it, they've they've made some moves to make themselves tougher to play against uh, and be more of a playoff team. Boston's already like that. But I was thinking about this too because I knew we were going to do our picks today. I, I don't like how Boston's playing right now. They seem to, when they do win, it seems they're they're not even that convincing of wins. No, there's, there's a lack of there's a lack of high end sexy talent on that team. So when you look at the roster, you're like, how do these guys win? Like, they they, they have good they have like Charlie McAvoy for me is one of the best defensemen in the league that nobody talks about. I, I Did you see him walk, Brady Kachuk? He's tremendous. He's a <laughs> trem- yeah. He's yeah. I saw that, but he, he, he's he's um, tough to discount Marchand. Uh, Charlie, Charlie Coyle, like, yeah. they've got talent. There's no question. I just I don't think, like the game they're playing, like you said. I'm going to take the Leafs. You take Toronto? Yeah. Oh, oh, uh, pains me. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you one thing. If Toronto, if Toronto loses in the first round this year, there's going to be I, – I think there's a, there's a coaching change that follows that. I think this is kind of their last kick at the can here for, for Sheldon Keith. So, yeah. Well, again, I – I'll go down the goaltending. I like Boston's goaltending, although there'll be a lot of pressure on these guys. I didn't get that. Could I'll, you try again? I'll take uh, I'll take Boston. <laughs> well, everybody's asking you for your pick. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm looking on Chat GPD to get my picks right now. No, I'm not. Just <laughs> I'm uh, I'll I'll, uh, I'll go with Boston just because I like uh, I like their goaltending, and then, and we'll see. I, they, they've matched up. I like their with- coach. Jim Montgomery is a is a huge issue for me i think he can out coach sheldon keith yeah I, that's that, that's my issue i love their staff too so i yes. i joe joe sacco is their forward coach i played yes. with uh i played with joe in anaheim uh tremendous guy actually he was the head coach of colorado for a while great guy great coach chris mm-hmm. kelly excellent coach as well um yeah I, i'm giving the coaching edge to to Toronto. sorry to, to boston but It'll come down to goaltending Wally, and that's why I'm taking Boston. I'm taking the Leafs. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna Here's have a miserable day. I, get it. I know. <laughs> huge, huge leaf fan. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's, imagine if if they lose, so it's gonna be total chaos. Like it's <laughs> so that's what I I wanna see. I wanna see complete utter chaos. It's funny because if they replace the coach, Yorkie. Then yeah. that doesn't guarantee Brendan Shanahan, by the way, job security if they lose round one. This whole oh, thing God. could be completely revamped. He's not going anywhere. When you oh, I don't know you, anymore. When you're the you get you get a lot of uh, you just blame the coach and <laughs> move on. The president's got a lot of uh, 
a very sports franchise. You got a lot of mulligans in that bag. Yeah, I'm not sure he's got enough left. So anyway, we'll see. But I do want to see utter chaos. <laughs> utter chaos. It's funny. When you're in the television business, um, and, I, and when I was working in Toronto for Sportsnet, everybody is cheering for the Leafs because it's good for business. Every Because it's, it's more money comes in, right? And that's... It's, yep. It's, oh, it's huge for them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's massive. So, um, yeah, we'll see. It's going to be... Pressure-wise, who's there more pressure on, though? Because I look at... One interesting aspect of that series is the goaltending. Boston had huge issues last year in the in the, in the the first round, remember? Yeah, uh, Swayman was hurt, right? Or Ulmark was hurt. Swayman was hurt. Yeah, but they, they ended up going back and forth. Um, they won. They had that great year, that historic year with, with the goals against and being so good defensively. And yeah. then... And, and then they just didn't get the saves in the playoffs. So it'll be it'll be interesting to see what happens. I, I think there's a lot more pressure on – everyone thinks there's pressure on Toronto and just as much on Boston. Yeah. Yeah. I, anyway, we'll see what happens. All right, Yorkie, uh, I got to get to the rink. So uh, you will spend all day figuring out how to work your BlackBerry and your Abacus yes. and uh, your Palm Pilot. And uh, get that sorted out. We will see you on Monday, everybody. Enjoy your weekend. All right. See you, everybody. See you, Yorkie. Thanks for tuning in to Coming In Hot. If you enjoyed the show, hit that like button and be sure to subscribe to never miss an episode. 